Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Cope. Um, I hope you guys have been enjoying um, listening to all the stories of all the powerful, powerful um, women and men that uh, have been sharing um, their experiences with us over the last uh, few weeks. I, th- I believe we're on episode six, so six weeks in. Um, and I'm sitting here with a dear friend and a fellow teacher at uh, one of the studios in town. Um, my darling, darling friend Yusra, who uh, I met actually in one of my classes uh, a while back and we had a brief conversation and she told me that her past had been similar to mine in that she had dealt with uh, alcohol addiction as well. So I wanted to sit down with her because obviously I've told you my story but uh, I'd love for her to share hers and how she's dealing with stuff and being a teacher in town and dealing with the pressures and coping in in healthier ways now. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Yusra. Hi Yusra, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming and thanks for asking me to do this. Of course. Well, um, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and then we can start with your story. Okay, so my name is Yusra. I um, I was an ex-banker, so I used to work in banking for such a long time, maybe 10 years. And then just recently, I moved to being a full-time yoga teacher. And I also work with social entrepreneurs as well in as a part-time job. Um, so where are you from? I am from Egypt. Okay. Uh, and I've been living in Dubai for the past seven years almost. I was living in New York in the, in, in the middle, but then I was, I would say, fully living in Dubai for the past seven years. Oh, well, Yusra's got a really, really soft personality. She's a really warm person and she, she teaches beautiful classes in Dubai, which we'll talk about later. But uh, tell me a little bit about your story and where your journey began with, uh, with life and then with your addiction. Okay, so I um, don't know where to start again. <laughs> At the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I, um, so I was in a relationship. I was married before. And um, I got a divorce officially three years ago. So it was September 2015. And what made me go uh, to alcohol or resort to alcohol is actually coping through, coping with the breakup and coping through with the divorce. So I started, um, I separated with my ex-partner in May 2014. And then till September 2015, when we had the divorce, I didn't really, I started drinking, but it was kind of like heavier than usual, but it wasn't really the um, heavy drinking that I would consider addiction. But then when we, when I reached the uh, point of having the divorce, then this is where I picked up alcohol and I started, I wasn't happy with my job as well. So I started really drinking heavily. I started drinking harder core uh, substances. I started drinking in the morning. I started uh, taking alcohol with me to work and I started really struggling with that. And I was always really drinking and crying and I wasn't, Kind. I didn't want to wake up because I didn't want to face the reality of my life, which is a failing marriage at the time. And then I didn't have a very good relationship with my mar- with my uh, parents as well because they didn't want me to get married to this person. And then I was dealing also with the job that I didn't like. So it was that my life was falling apart completely. And this is where I found a good resort in alcohol because I didn't really think about anything when I was on alcohol. And um, and that's it really with the alcohol story. But then it became worse and worse and worse until at one point I was out and then I really fell apart completely. And then I started vomiting in the bathroom and it was really not a nice scene. So a friend of mine came to me and then she was like, you really need to get out of this because it's not working. If you need to, to live for the next 30 years or so, then you need to live healthy and happy. You cannot resort to something outside. You need to just find the solution for whatever this suffering that you're going through. You said at one point that you actually thought about committing suicide. It was, yes. So at one point when I was um, when I was going through all of these divorce stories and with my parents, my dad died as well at the time and I wasn't able to go see him before he passed away. 
and uh, my parents of course didn't appreciate the fact that I kind of let them to, to get married to somebody that they didn't like so I wasn't able to go to his funeral which really added to, uh, to my suffering I would say and at this point I was thinking yes that life is not worthy and I would kind of like okay maybe ending my life like I, I tried this um, bit or I tried this side and it really didn't work so well so maybe if I try the other side it would be better mm. but uh, thank god that I had people who really loved me and, uh, and, and, and I didn't really end up uh, committing suicide because here I am but with the alcohol as well like I remember thinking I mean you know what you're doing to yourself is not a good thing why did why was it so hard to stop was it because of all the thoughts that were like waiting like a floodgate would open if you actually stayed sober and it was basically not wanting to think those thoughts or like you know what you're doing is not good for you yeah but it's a kind of numbs the pain mm -hmm. so it's so you have alcohol and then you don't really need so you get drunk and then you you're not in your um, complete state of being healthy and sober and mindful so you're not able to think straight of whatever you really want to to do or where my life or where your life is heading at the time it wasn't heading anywhere so it's a kind of um, of, of numbing the whole pain and it's it's easier than just face it you know like sometimes it's it makes you feel better because you don't really feel it you don't really feel it I had family around me when I was going through what I went through. I had family around me, and my mom was probably the one person that I that stood by me. But I, through the process, I absolutely hated her, and she would constantly say to me, "Just stop." And I don't know people that don't go haven't gone through this stuff. I mean, hopefully, you know, you don't ever have to if you've never if you've never had to, but you know being someone with an addiction it's like yes i would if i could exactly it's but not it makes you easy. feel better so you don't really want to to give it up because you know that there is a flow of emotions and of problems and of thoughts that's waiting for you on the other side if you stop so it's kind of being in this unhealthy situation or being even making yourself ridiculous sometimes it's better than facing your own issues because it's much harder and it's much really more difficult so when did when did you say so you said your friend came to you and said all right you need to like figure this out because this can't be a permanent solution was that what what did you do after that so i had uh, a few things to do and i thought about it and what she said really made sense because i was also suffering in the sense of my body i was losing a lot of weight because I was drinking and not eating enough and it was re I looked like a ghost at one point so I was like you know what I've been doing this for now a year or maybe 18 like what, 11 months something like this and it didn't really work to help me so maybe I would try the other road of um, of doing other kind of more mindful things and more healthy stuff and trying to transform my life so I did a few things. First thing I did, which I maybe people wouldn't uh, kind of talk about it, they did, but I sought therapy. So I went to a psychologist and he didn't put me on any medication or anything, but I would just go to him. We have a chat and it's great to have a chat with someone who doesn't know you, who doesn't judge you, who doesn't know anything about your life. So you just talk and talk and talk and then he gives me his opinion without really being judgmental or any expectations kind of thing and he gave me a few things to cope with the difficulties I was going through so I was uh, dealing with insomnia so I started doing a little bit of um, exercises before I go to bed breathing of course yoga helped a little bit with that um, I started doing, um, before I go to bed, a gentle yoga flow that would help me to go to, to have a peaceful sleep. Uh, I started uh, having a little bit of uh, herbs and stuff like this, like chamomile, like more natural things to help me to sleep. And it got better after a while, so I did that. 
Then, of course, I started practicing more yoga. So I went back to my, I'd, I've done my teacher training before when, um, when I was still with my ex-partner, but then I didn't pick it up. It was more of an escape kind of thing to go to the teacher training just to decide about my life more than that I wanted to be a teacher. So I started picking up again my practice. So I started being committed every day, uh, waking up before work trying to do even a little bit of sun salutations, nothing really, just to build a commitment. Um, so this helped me a lot, of course, and I started doing reading more about the yoga philosophy, about even stuff that are not asana practice, like the yoga philosophy really, and how to be a real yogi, how to practice acceptance, how to practice commitment, how to practice all of these other things that are as part of yoga as also the asana practice. So I started doing that. No, so it's um, that. it's 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 amazing to hear you talk about it because according like you for you 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 know you haven't relapsed, and me I did, and as I said like when we're ha we're having a conversation I told you like I don't deal with stress very well, and I've started to journal about this stuff and make note of my patterns of what how I deal with stress and try to change those patterns. But even when I started to teach initially, and in my head, I wasn't obviously doing the best job at all because I am a perfectionist and everything, if it wasn't perfect, it was wrong. There, were no, there was no in between. But then I started to read and you got this certain like scenario in your head about the perfect yogi. And you know, I'd have like a drink or two before teaching sometimes and even that became part of a cycle for me for a while. It was like, I'm not a perfect yogi, so I need a drink, but then because I drink, I'm not a perfect yogi. And that used to kind of almost send me down a dark hole again. Like, I just want to drink because I was like, fuck it, I'm not perfect, so yeah. why bother if but I'm not going to be perfect? But then drink, you feel you're not perfect as well, yeah. Exactly. And journaling also, that was another mechanism that I, um, I, um, I tried or that helped me a lot. So I started, and this was again the, the idea of this therapist that I was seeing. So I started talking, like I started writing about how I feel. I started writing about anything really, like sometimes the ideas just flow without me kind of thinking what I write. And then one of the very good ideas that he told me and it helped me a lot, it wasn't journaling, but it was about writing a letter to whoever I, I can see um, holding me back from being better or from mm. getting better. So for example, he told me like, you can just get a piece of paper and write, imagine that your ex-partner has died or he doesn't exist anymore and you just write for him a goodbye letter of whatever he made you feel or whatever you're feeling now or whatever you wanted things to be and this helped me a lot as well because it's a kind of a letting go mechanism and it would create space for other things for you to to enter or other feelings like you let go of the negativity and then it creates space for other things so did you do that with your dad as well I did this with my mom. I didn't do it with my dad. So I did it with my ex-partner. I did it with my mom, which really helped me a lot as well to to be able to deal with her again because it, I had a lot of issues with her for so many years, mm. almost seven, eight years. So this was the first year, actually, I was able to kind of go and stay with her and have a conversation. And this was partly why, because I did that. That's amazing. Writing letters. So the with the AA, you apologize to everyone you think you've hurt. Yes. But your therapist said write letters and let them know how you feel. Yeah. And that helped you to let go and create space in your life. That's beautiful. Exactly. That's really beautiful. Yeah. And it's great. And I really advise anyone who, not even going through big things, but sometimes it's good to let go of these feelings and putting them on paper sometimes makes you feel how trivial they are or how big they are, but at least when they're in front of you, then you can see, okay, fine, now I can let them go and I can, and sometimes like the one, the letter for my ex-partner, I burn it, for example, so you know that these feelings are not there anymore and you kind of like, Permanent burn them, in yes, exactly. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, so I did that. You talked about, so your alcoholism was driven from this place of needing to fit societal standards and you know, in, in, a, in a way, like leading the perfect marital life, you defied your parents, you walked away from that, and you said, I'm going to go get married. But then it didn't work out. And so you started to feel like, well, life is, a, is breaking down around me. 
and I've disappointed a lot of people, which I can relate to a lot because that's the way Asian cultures work, right? There are these, not pressures, but there are these expectations that are put on you by your own family and then expectations that are put on you by society. And when stuff like this happens, like divorce, it's a huge oh my god moment where you're filled with fear it's like okay well what are people gonna say people are gonna talk now my family doesn't want to deal with me either um, you said there was a lot of fear in your life which is why you wanted to drink as well just to get rid of that fear and um, now looking back on uh, on the whole situation how do you feel about dealing with fear I think you have to deal with fear to get out of it, in my opinion. But it's, as you said, that you just said now, it's the same in, in the Middle Eastern cultures. Our culture, like I come from Egypt, and it's the same thing. So, growing up as a girl, you have all these expectations that you need to be a good daughter, you need to be a good student, and then you need to get married to the perfect guy, have a kid or two, and this is how your life should be. And I never saw my life going through this pattern. Of course, I was, in my opinion, a good daughter. I had, I was good with my studies. I had a good job. But even when I did that with, with what I did with my parents or with my marriage, I kind of expected that this could be like the fairy tale that I went out of the usual. But when it didn't work, it added, again, the same things that you said, this fear of like being accepted back as divorced, which sometimes some... Arabs would label you a little bit that it's kind of not something that is desirable for women or that just to fit in after being in such a long time in a relationship just to fit in back of being single again if I could call it this way so it's it's fear of, of what's coming and fear if I'm worthy of being alone because I was really alone like my parents were not with me my partner wasn't with me I have friends but again I was kind of alone in this situation and I had to deal with it. So for me, dealing through fear is of course important to come out of it, but being or resorting to alcohol was kind of like, okay, I need to hide away from this fear instead of facing it and instead of kind of try to deal with it. So, uh, so if this answer your question. I love it because I think we've had a conversation about this and I think some, some really beautiful things have come from you facing your fears. So tell us a little bit about um, your blog. Yeah. So uh, when I, again, um, when I was still married, so I, w I w not only married, but it's been a long time, um, I would say five or six years that I really wanted to uh, start my blog like at the beginning it was just a travel blog that I would travel and I would I would write about my travels and and this is something that I wanted to start and I even bought the domain but I never started it and when I was going through all of these changes in my life and all of these problems I said you know what I really need to do it because mm -hmm. I really wanted to do it for a long time and I faced so many failures I was afraid to fail if I do it but at this point, I was like, you know what, my life is falling apart anyway. So if I fail till this point, it wasn't really going well and it failed completely. So what worse could happen? At least it would something. It, it's, it's like you turn fearless, it. right? There is exactly, no more fear. Exactly. There is nothing more that you're afraid of. So this was one thing that I really started. And at the beginning, I started um, more about my travel. So in 2000, I resorted to travel as well. So this was one of my coping mechanisms. So in 2016, I went to six new countries. So uh, I used to travel, I bought a camera, I went to a photography course to kind of uh, try to make my blog a little bit uh, sexy. <laughs> so I did that and then I started writing a little bit about my travels, but it was more kind of like um, travel advice, like about what to do, where to stay, stuff like this. But then after I developed a little bit and I knew a little bit more about myself, it became more about sharing my feelings, sharing even after I went to my uh, yoga, yin yoga teacher training, I shared how I felt and it was more personal rather than generic and it took me really a long time to do that because I was again afraid to, to come out of my shell and to show that okay this is how I feel and would, people would read it. I wasn't really afraid that they would judge me on the contrary I started seeing it as 
something that you describe and then it might help someone who's experiencing the same things. So this was the beginning of the blog and then after, so now um, it developed a little bit so I changed now, so at the beginning it was all about traveling, now because I started doing a little bit of, uh, or teaching yoga as well. So I, my, my website became a little bit more about traveling and my yoga practice. Mm. Plus, because as a woman coming from the Middle East, as I said, I struggled a little bit with the idea of being a woman and believing in yourself and believing that you can do so many things on your own and that you're really enough. So, so I started, I teach prenatal yoga. So I started a small blog for prenatal and I started a small community for, uh, for prenatal ladies that um, I really love. So, so now we have this community uh, events that we do every uh, month. So they come and then they uh, share ideas about their pregnancies, they share ideas about their lives, even about their feelings, because for me, I always thought everyone is pregnant and happy, but some people, they're pregnant and they just didn't want it, or they're going through a tough time with the husband or the partner or any of that. So it's good to have this community of like-minded mm. people who they can share or they can just talk without again being judged and, and just to know that as women we should be just there for each other no matter what even you're pregnant you're you decided to end your pregnancy you did whatever that it's just something that we're there for each group. other yeah, yes exactly. absolutely i mean like so much happens when you're pregnant as well like your body's changing the hormones are going crazy it's like you know i mean i was talking like the i spoke to Brittany a couple weeks ago and she was she was talking about this too like she had eating disorder she's you know she's still dealing with it but like i can't imagine going through pregnancy myself just because of that too and i don't know how much i've coped and finished coping with my eating disorder it's like pregnancy scares the crap out of me like yeah, because it's not easy and that's yeah. why it's good and even if you want it at some point okay maybe you have doubts do I do, do can I really raise this baby or do I really want this or I, after they give birth I want my body back or I want my life back or it's, it's just not as easy uh, as and glamorous as they show it on TV or on Instagram so yeah. you really need to 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 deal with it and that's why I started this because I thought you know I had problems coping with uh, being a woman in, in let's say and all the in pressures that exactly and all the pressures yeah. so, so it's good to start such a community to help them mentally physically and emotionally really. that's really amazing babe so what is the name of your website and what is the like where can people find more information about both your own personal journey as well as uh, the prenatal stuff so my website is called Zenwizuki so uh, it's it zenwizuki.com yeah it's www.zenwizuki and my instagram the same so it's it's all about my classes the prenatal community some books that are related to pregnancy and uh, to um, giving birth and uh, i get some people also to write some pieces to my blog in different things related to pregnancy and my Instagram is the same so it has my also uh, my updated schedule of classes and uh, all the information about me That's so it's Zen Wizuki as well amazing yeah well what about your therapist is your therapist in Dubai or is the person outside Dubai he's in Abu Dhabi he's in Abu Dhabi yeah um, can some can people who want to get in touch with you would you mind sharing his of information course. with yeah, them yeah, no no definitely because it really helped me a lot and it was at this point again from my culture it was like whoever goes to therapy is kind of crazy same so same. it's like so a sign of weakness right yeah, don't talk exactly. about it whereas in the states it's like oh my god who's your therapist like if you don't have a therapist you're not you're not trendy enough exactly yeah. so so for me it, it was also great to seek help because if we can't seek help then if you don't admit that you need to seek help then there is something wrong so so i really advise if anyone is going through anything really it's good to go and talk and to just have these different mechanisms to to help yourself out of what you're going through that's amazing so what do you see for yourself in the future fearless Zuki <laughs> <laughs> well uh, I have to say that I see myself doing the same things after such a long time that I was trying to be like the perfect banker, the perfect daughter, or the perfect wife, or like whatever. So now I'm doing what I really like and I'm living the life that I really like. So I would see myself 
living the same life anywhere really so now I'm based here in Dubai so who knows in a couple of years where I will be but I would like to be again I will continue definitely doing stuff for women so I would like to to maybe start something for single moms or um, so now that I started with prenatal that would be maybe a next step mm -hmm. so so this would be something like I would like to work with women and I, I really enjoy it and I always feel that we as women coming even from this eastern cultures Asian cultures we, we don't really um, achieve our full potential because of society sometimes mm -hmm. and it's good to start something like this to help women to, uh, to, to cope with whatever they're going through, yeah. really, either divorce, pregnancy, uh, being single motherhood, whatever it is. I think one of the biggest things that we're raised with, as you said earlier, is this need for a provider and a protector in a man. And when you don't have that, it's almost like you feel incomplete, or you should feel incomplete. Mm -hmm. And I find that that is a it's taken me a long time even when I started to make a decision about getting sober it's like I didn't want to jump into any relationship very soon because I thought to myself I don't want to meet somebody to fix me like a jigsaw puzzle I don't want to meet somebody who's going to complete me I want to make myself complete and meet another complete human being yeah but it takes a long time for us to to realize this because how we are raised of how, how my society is it's like you need to be under your father and then at one point you grow up even if you're independent you work you have your own income or whatever but then you need to get married and be under the umbrella of a husband so being just yourself doing what you want is something is really that is not common in such cultures it's not promoted opinion. it's exactly, not common exactly so that's why it's good to encourage women to do that Absolutely. now it's changing of course but it would be great to do i think some more work that's with amazing. that yeah and and again to to promote the idea for women that even if you fail like do whatever you want and do whatever you you see yourself doing and even if you fail it doesn't matter because it's like you kind of go through all this journey of failure which is fine but this is how you grow and when you reach this failing point this is all the magic where all the magic happens and all where you grow and you find the really best version of yourself in my opinion i read a quote once that said something about nothing is ever failure yeah. You don't ever technically fail. Like when you think about failure, it may be for yourself or you feel like you haven't risen to your best potential or you feel like you haven't done the best work that you could or whatever that might be. But it's it's never a complete failure because you always learn. It's a you learning always process. Learn. And, and I think that the most important takeaway for me is learning about myself because I never really had the time to be by myself and to experience all of these failures at the same time. So this is how you grow and this is how you cope with whatever difficulty you're going through just to, to achieve this best version of yourself, really. Absolutely. Do you have any, final question, do you have any like books that you recommend or meditations or any material out there that people can people can grab a hold of that you recommend reading or watching or anything like that yeah there is there are actually a couple of books that i really like so um, uh, and it's all about mindfulness i do even a lot of my classes a lot of work in my classes for mindfulness and being in the present moment and enjoy wherever you are and don't stress out or think about the future so so there is a very nice book, it's called Wherever You Go, There You Are. It's, mm. uh, it's by John Kabat-Zinn, if you know him. It's a, he's a very good uh, mindfulness, um, or he's a very prominent mindfulness author. And then there is a Vietnamese author that I always have difficulty pronouncing his name. His name is like Sitch or something, but the book is The Art of Living, mm -hmm. and it's really good. And uh, there is a very nice meditation book as well. It's called Meditations to Heal Your Life. It's by Louise Hay. Yes. So, so that's a very nice book as well. So these are like my three top recommended books. Amazing. Well, um, as uh, Yusra said, her, her schedule is online, so I'm not going to ask her to tell us where her classes are. I'll post the link for her um, Instagram account when I post uh, along with this, along with this um, um, video slash podcast or whatever you want to call it 
Um, and if you guys want to get in touch with Yusra for any additional information, if you're going through something, Yusra has kindly offered to help. And if you need uh, recommendations for a therapist, because I, I kind of feel like if you're in a place where you're ready to find help, it's important to find the right help. Like for me, my therapist could have been somebody who really helped me out, but I didn't resonate with the person and he was giving me medication and it was just not working for me. But as Yusra said, like it's really important to find somebody that you can talk to. I think that becomes the first step when you can actually say out loud what you're dealing with and hear yourself, admit to yourself that there is something that needs to be worked on. But um, I hope you guys are doing really well, Yusra. Thank you so much you so for sitting much. down with me. You're a goddess, girl. You are <laughs> such a goddess. And thanks for asking me to do this, really. I'm really happy that I did it. I'm so happy to have sat down with you. You were like telling me my own story. So <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks and, a lot. Yeah. Um, have a great day, everybody. And uh, yeah, stay strong and stay amazing and stay real. If someone asks you how you're doing, sit them down and tell them how you're really doing. Because fine is probably the wrong answer always. So know that uh, you're loved and you're supported. And uh, if you have any questions for Yusra, please, or myself, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Yusra, once Thank more. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks.